Morning, everybody. We're going to be discussing the electrical um, installations. So let's start straight away. Um, uh, first of all, uh, I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Herman Strauss. Um, I'm, I'm just doing the introduction to this presentation. We have a, a expert uh, presenter that will assist us later on. But I need to address, let's address the elephant in the room. The big, the, the one question people keeps asking over and over lately. May a plumber do electrical work? Do you know the answer to that? Um, that was a, a lot of the uh, questions that we have. May a plumber do electrical work? And the fact is, we all know the answer to that question. Um, the Occupational Health and Safety Act clearly says that only a registered person must be in control of that and may only a registered person must may, be a, uh, may do electrical work. So we can delve into the nitty gritties of that. Fact is, no, if you're not an electrician, you are not legally authorized to do electrical work. That's what the law says. We have to face the reality of the situation we're dealing with. We know that plumbers have been doing electrical work for decades. We know that in many situations, um, the consumers I mean, expect the plumber to, to do the work because it's been the norm for such a long, a long time. From the PRB side, we are obviously not able to go out and change the behavior all on our own immediately. So it's important to note that the PRB does not encourage plumbers to do electrical work. We will never encourage anybody to, to do work that you are not legally authorized to do. However, safety comes first. It is more important that we do not put our consumers or our plumbers safety or health at risk. That is critical. So this presentation is not aimed at explaining who's allowed to do what and where do you go with that. What this presentation focuses on is the safety aspects. There will, there's different processes happening regarding what's legal and what's not legal. Please, um, well, that's, so it's not even up for debate. We're focusing on safety. Therefore, please note the disclaimer as well. Wherever the presenter might say you have to do this or do that, it doesn't mean that he's, that, that he's giving you the authority or that he's giving anybody the authority to do electrical work. It doesn't mean who's, who is, there's no indication of who is supposed to do that or not. This is a technical presentation to give you an insight about what is safe and what is not safe so that you can apply your own mind on how not to leave your consumer with a dangerous installation and how not to leave a dangerous installation behind for the next plumber that comes along. So I hope that is clear to everybody. And I think that we will all appreciate the fact that we, we're dealing with this in the real life um, and we're doing everything we can to, to try and make it as safe as possible for everybody. So this presentation has been compiled in collaboration with uh, Mr. Philip Skepers. So he is a professional uh, electrical technician. He helped compile this. Um, we can go through his CV and all his achievements so far. Unfortunately, at such short notice, he was not able to present this himself, um, but he was um, instrumental in, in guiding this, giving the information that we need to present to you. Um, Mr. Skippers was, amongst other things, for many years a lecturer and senior and a very senior position at the uh, Centurion Technical College where he trained electricians. So he pretty much know what he's doing. But we are very fortunate that we also have a registered electrician, Mr. Alan Scholes, who is very knowledgeable, has been dealing with this for a very long time, and he will be doing this presentation for you today. So with that, Mr. Scholes, Alan, it's all up to you now. <laughs> Good morning, Arman. Good morning, guys. And morning, gentlemen and ladies. Um, thank you, Arman. Uh, this morning, I just want to discuss the importance of earthing and bonding um, to the geysers and what impact it has on other safety components. So Arman, if you can just change to the next slides, and if I say next to just page for me, please. 
I'm doing so well. I'm trying. Let me just get the. Oh, sorry. Technology is winning me. Uh, there you go. Yeah. The emphasis on this uh, presentation is will be more on replacements. As uh, on new builds, you will find that the electrician will sign off a COC where you have tested the earthing and bonding that's in place. That's part of the COC check or one of the checklists on the COC. In our installations for um, 10254, we can see at clause 4.4, it addresses the electrical part where it says uh, the electrical wiring system shall comply with SANS 10142 and the water heater shall be connected to the electrical supply in an approved manner. Okay, next one, Herman. What this will mean is that the system or the electrical installation, what we do on a replacement, will have the following components. Next one, Herman. The geyser shall have an isolator with a correct size supply wire to the geyser. That will be a requirement with uh, not minimum of 2.5 square millimeters of the wire size. The geyser shall be earthed and bonded. The geyser will also the geyser circuit shall be protected by earth leakage. There's the references to that clauses. So guys, this is what 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 does it now mean for the plumber himself? Next slide, Herman. <clears throat> that to make an electrical system um, safe, it will need to have all these components. And if you do identify some of these components not in place, you will need to you need to inform the homeowner of these um, components that's not in there, like the earth leakage that we're referring to, the earth leakage, the circuit breaker, an isolator that's in arm's reach of the geyser installation or replacement, the bonding and the earthing that will go to the bonding and then the correct wire size to the geyser. Next slide, Herman. So we are more, we are aware that in older houses and you could try and do a geyser replacement that most of the installations at that time they did um, connect the geyser not through the earth leakage. So if you can identify something like that to make the homeowner aware, to make sure that an electrician can come out and see that the geyser circuit is connected through the earth leakage. And um, details of this will be discussed on a later stage. But let me go quickly through the function and the importance of the earthing for this earth leakage. Next slide, Thermo. So the earth leakage, and that's what the name implies, um, gives you the imbalanced currents. That's how it protects yourself or protects the equipment. When there's an imbalance in current through, this, through the earth leakage, it will give a tripping function. And that, will, that is the part where even if you touch a um, scenario that you will get and you find you're showering and you have a tickling feeling on your, through your body, this is what's happening through it. So if the earth leakage is, and it's earthed correctly, that earth leakage will pick up that leakage current and trip before it gets too high and you get um, hurt in the process. Next slide, Tamar. And the same with a circuit breaker. A circuit breaker can't function or see a uh, inrush of current if there's no earth connected to it. Let's say there's a dead short or there's a, a, a live neutral contact or a neutral or a live to earth contact, the circuit breaker will have the same function in tripping it. That's why it's important to have your system or the geyser or the component earthed so that this circuit breaker can see the fault current on it wherever it touches the, the live part. Next slide, Armand. So there's a brief explanation of how the circuit breaker will work. So when you do have an inrush of current and it's overloading, you will find that the pin will pull, the, the electromagnet will pull the pin that will give you the tripping function for overload systems. 
but when you do have a short circuit, that's a quick inrush current that will make the circuit breaker trip. But if there's no earthing to it, it can't see that inrush current, and that is where you will find maybe typical wires that are burning or uh, um, a, de a big dead short. Next slide, Armon. So what makes a circuit breaker trip? It is contact with a live and neutral or the earth wire. And when a circuit breaker will also trip is on an overload bigger than the rating of the of the circuit breaker. Next slide, Armon. So for both these components, earthing and earthing to an item will function these components properly. That makes it safe. So for the earth leakage and the circuit breaker, you need to make sure that there is a continuity of earthing on it. Next slide, Armand. So while we get the next slide up, Ellen, I, I can just confirm. So the the big takeaway from that part of your presentation says the, the circuit breaker and uh, the trip switch, I mean, they're there to protect you, to, to, to cut out when there's a dangerous current to happen. And if it's not earth, it ain't going to work. You're going to be shocked. That's correct. Simple as that. So in this installation, when we're replacing a geyser, this is the items we need to look out for. That there is an earth, -like, earth leakage and circuit breaker installed. That will be at your main distribution board. Where there's an isolator installed, that will be normally arm's reach of your geyser or heat pump um, that you need to isolate. Then you will need to make sure that that component is earthed, where the earth terminal is supplied to the geyser, and to make sure that from that earth terminal that your hot and cold water um, pipes are then bonded together. You will see the illustration between the two, um, where, the, where the earth wire are connected to the bonding and uh, to, connected to the hot and the cold water pipe. So this is a brief one that a plumber needs to take awareness of to see that all these components are connected so to make this installation safe so that the safety components that needs to function of that earthing are intact next slide Armand. and this also addresses um solar water heaters that are installed on the outside and heat pumps when you do come across a replacement of a solar water heater or heat pump do make sure that you do see that there is uh, the earthing to the bonding is being done and that is it that it is sufficient and also to note to the homeowner that it's been checked because if some cases where there is maybe like a lightning strike onto a geyser system and the geyser got faulty that they need to get somebody out to retest that earthing to the DB again, as it could have had damaged the earth wiring to the distribution board. Next slide, Arma. So be wise to be careful. Protect yourself and others against danger, rather to be reckless. So what that means is, in short, do not leave installation um, in a worse, um, unsafer condition than when you got it. What I'm referring to is the next slides. This is, this is um, installations that I came across where you could have seen that the installation or the earthing was connected to the bonding and it was not secured again back as it, as it was in, in, as before the replacement. The next slide, Armand. You can also see that the bonding was done onto the cold water pipe, but the earthing was not put or not connected back to the bonding. And this is the part where we need to be very careful to not leave the installation unsafe. Next slide. In, in, in other words, Alan, if I look at that one, I, I, but what I understand is the, the, because the earth wire is not connected to the bonding, it, well, it doesn't help at all. That continuity yes. doesn't go back to the safety components. It doesn't go back to the trip switches. So you you might, even though there's bonding between the pipes, you might end up getting shocked uh, all the same. 
Yes, the, the, the fact is that the, the earth resistance from the geyser to your distribution, because that's where the earthing, the main earthing is, is lying, is there's no um, resist, resistance path. So if there is a current, a leakage current that will need to go through, it will need to go the longer route or the high, uh, a, a further route to, to, to detect its stripping function or earth leakage function. So if it's not connected, the, two, the, the, uh, the circuit breaker and the earth leakage can't see the leakage through the, the earth, earthing of the system. That's why it's important to always make sure that you do earth your flange and the bonding of your, two, um, your hot and cold water pipes. You can see the installation, the replacement was done where the bonding strap was cut and just um, squished together um, to make continuity. But the issue here is the surface contact between the two is so minimal that there's no use in, in using that, that, that strip again. Next, next slide. The same applies here. Um, you can see that the bonding strap was <laughs> is there, but too short to go or wrap around the, 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 the water pipe. So what in essence it means is that the um, minimum requirement for the earthing and the bonding wire is minimum 2.5 wire. You can see that that's also inefficient on this particular one. And that it, there's not enough surface contact area between the pipe and the bonding strap. So again, the resistance path of this is very high. Next slide, no, Amon. Uh, Alan, sorry, I, I, I want to comment again. I've, I've had a good explanation mm. on this one recently, if you relate it to plumbing. What, what you've effectively done, there, it's, it's like having a, a 20 mil pipe. So you've got two 20 mil pipes, but in joining the two 20 mil pipes, you only you use the reducer. Now that you reduce it down to a 10 mil and then back to a 20 mil. So what do you get? At the end of the day, you've got the, the restriction in the middle is what determines the, the flow of electricity. So in the pipe work, we know a restriction like that is, I mean, it's going to totally yeah. stuff up your installation, your flow rates. And the same applies with electricity there. It's like putting a, a, a large restriction between the connections. So although they might be connected, um, the, the flow of the current is just way, well, not, not nearly yes. good enough. So when you will put your um, resistance tester between the two points, you will find that the resistance will be much higher when connecting the bonding strap around the pot and you take a resistance test again, you will find it's a little bit lower. So the resistance path we want to keep as low as possible. The same situation on this side. You can see that it was stacked or soldered on one end, but it could be not sufficient as when you take the resistance and the only part to, is you need to measure it. To know if it's, if it's proper is you need to measure it. And again, you can't um, say if you don't have the instrumentation to measure it. So we would rather do the good practice and wrap it around and tighten it up. Same scenario this side. You can see it's just a small spot that was tacked onto the, the, the copper pipe. Next slide, Arman. Sorry, uh, sorry. I, I started talking and I wasn't muted. Um, again, just adding on to what you say there, Alan, this, the, the, the one thing that we've, that we've seen with this is it needs a little bit of movement for that to come, to come loose as well, because it's just a little bit of solder on the side. Um, I think, yeah, Can, Alan, just the, the, the one question that, that did come across was, uh, I mean, soldering. Can, can you use soldering? I know that in, or correct me if I'm wrong, I, it's, it's been said that in some areas of the country where there's very corrosive areas, um, soldering might have a negative effect on the pipe work, or is soldering fine to, to solder um, to actually solder the bonding onto the pipes. Again, they I, what we will... the wrong question. <laughs> <laughs> now it's a valid question, Armand. The thing is, um, the soldering part onto the pipe, um, we still say uh, 
the effect that it has on the on the copper because you're heating it up and the corrosion part will have an effect on it but then again the continuity of it if it's a proper solder on it and you have the correct equipment to test this to see that the resistance to the pipe and the solder that you made is low enough it would be sufficient that's now taking out the the, the um the corrosion part but good practice is to wrap it around and tighten it up so that when you do need to remove it you need to use a spanner to just remove it now if you if i want to replace this and i know now i, I need to desolder it to put it up again the the emphasis is just it makes it so difficult to just um un, un, unbond it again um where you have two nuts molds a bolt and nut to tighten and, and loosen it again so let's stick with the good practice that the guys are using and in the corrosive part that will the guys need to do see how they um accomplish that challenge um when they get to that one okay there is this <laughs> there is one of the examples that we just talked about so if I need to remove that pipe now, I need to cut away all the wire, desolder it. That will be such additional work where you could have just made a proper bonding strap around it and just put a crimping on it. Um, that makes it easy, replaceable or loosening it and replacing the pipes. But again, if you don't have the equipment to test that resistance, we will draw it, deem it as unsafe. You need to get somebody to, to verify that. Next slide. In this particular installation, you will see that the earthing wire was just cut off. It was not um, secured back to the, um, the geyser flange. So you will find that this installation has no earthing to it, meaning that the circuit breaker, even on the overload current, without a dead short will just keep on overloading 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 until it gets to a certain point where the circuit breaker will overheat and trip and again no earth leakage if the system was connected to earth leakage there will no be there won't be any earth detection on this so very important to make sure that that earth wire is connected to the geyser and bonded to the hot and cold water piping next slide Tamar. There's a, a different angle of this uh, particular installation. So it's just the um, neutral and earth after life and neutral wire going to the geyser system. No earthing to the system. Next slide. Sorry. Again, started speaking. Started speaking without unmuting. This was actually the last slide of the of the present of of all the examples um i can just just remind everybody uh that all all questions you have please type it into the in, into the questions panel um as you know as you normally do what we'll do is we will take all of those questions uh prepare uh, a proper presentation that we can give to everybody um at, at the next session to answer all the the technical issues you have um i'm going to politely ask you don't ask the questions about the elephant in the room who can who cannot as we said we're not going to address that and that's not avoiding the subject the focus for this topic is safety what do we how do we ensure this is safe i can repeat that i think it's important for for everybody to be able to recognize a dangerous situation so that something can be done about that all the the different channels are available to do this in a safe manner um whether it is through the through the help of a registered electrician uh through engagement with the, with the homeowner i mean information is always important make sure the homeowner is, is aware and involved where necessary but the focus of this is safety so please everybody type in all your questions um we will we will definitely get back to you at, at the next session to answer all the technical questions, give some guidance on that. Then, um, just to finalize, Alan, are there any final uh, comments from your side? Yes, last one. Um,
guys just make sure of all the there's three wires connected to this system just please make sure that the earth wire is the most important one because if the earth wire is not connected yes the life and neutral will still make the system work but the earth wire is the most important one to make it safe so please guys make sure that you make a proper solid connection with those earth wires and um, and uh, make sure that it's, it's intact thank you guys have a nice day so thank you everybody thank you for joining us for for the session